and when you die, you know, it's not us that will bury you. The government of Zambia will fly you with a chopper because the government of Zambia has money to fly people who are dead. But when they are alive, they don't have money to fly them. So if also known as Gelawa Pazer, girl from Zambia. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe so that each time I upload a videos, you will be notified that Gelawa Pazer uploads a poker video. Thank you, thank you so much for more than 49,200 plus subscribers. I am so grateful that you people come to my YouTube channel to check out my YouTube content and I'm not taking this lightly and at the end of this video I will share a few names of my subscribers it doesn't mean you're not my loyal subscriber but these are subscribers that always comment on my videos I will be doing this often so that you too can get a free gift from me just to say thank you for your support Na Totela San in this video, I will be addressing the statement that was made yesterday during the press brief by the Republican president of Zambia, Edgar Chagua Lungu. And I want to point out a few things and just explain my understanding of COVID-19 and how Zambia is taking COVID-19 lightly as compared to other parts of the world. For those of you who may not be aware, I am based in the UK. I have been here for more than 16 years now. And during this time of the pandemic, I remember when Boris Johnson had predicted that we would at least expect 20,000 deaths, but it has shot up to more than 30,000 deaths since the coronavirus spread through the United Kingdom. In this little town where I live, we have more than 1,000 cases, active cases of people who have COVID-19. Places where I have worked, loads of people have died. In the place where I was working, the last time you saw me in my video, um, we've even been laid off work because there is no residence there. Many of them have died and only a few are left in the whole home. That's how serious the coronavirus is. So in watching the press brief, the Republican president of Zambia mentioned that he has allowed casinos, restaurants, and other places to open because it is okay for them to start their business. I am not in support of the idea, I'm sorry. I, I don't care what you say, but I know how I have seen people have looked after die of the coronavirus. And opening casinos is a big risk to the public of Zambia because some people can be carriers, but they don't even know and they can infect other people. I will give you an example of a lady, I'll name X, that I have been working with. She has even stopped going to work presently. This is a real story. She got the coronavirus from where we were working and went home, infected her husband. Now, as I'm speaking, her husband has died. It's not even a joke. Her husband is now in the mortuary and are planning his funeral and everything. And she feels so guilty that if she had stayed home, maybe her husband wouldn't have been infected. This is why we keep on saying, stay home, stay safe. You don't know who is out there. Now, by the president making it open that 
People can go to the casinos and pubs and restaurants. It puts the Zambian people at a very, very big risk. A few weeks ago, people were celebrating that Zambia didn't have many cases of the coronavirus. Until we, until we started having one, two, three, four, five. Now we have reached seven deaths in Zambia. And presently we have 85 new cases. The coronavirus is a deadly virus. And I don't see the reason why the president of Zambia has allowed pubs or restaurants to be open. However, Capone's boss, I saw a post from him. He has said in as much as the president has allowed them to open their places, he will not allow Capone's to be open. Now, this is somebody who would have said, I want to be making money. There is no need for us to risk our lives just because we want to make money anyway. I've heard that some government officials have casinos in Zambia. Maybe why they that's why they want to allow them to be open so that they can benefit from the casinos because there's no way any president around the world will allow a casino to be open this time. Casinos have different things that are people use equipment machines whatever people will be playing cards that's even worse how are people going to play cards in the casino on those vending machines are they going to be first putting hand sanitizer on their hands first and then touching the machines how are they going to communicate even when they are playing games i mean why should we allow gambling to be part of a priority of something that is open when even in the western world pubs are closed why do our African leaders always think of things that will only benefit them? Honestly, I don't see the reason why a casino should be open. A pub, I can understand because they can sell food there so people can buy drinks and food. But in as much as pubs will be open, um, it, it would be a big risk as well. Again, we had Boman Lusambo that was chasing people around uh, because they were in pubs, they were in private places where they were drinking 5, 10, 20 people and he was whipping them. So what has changed? Why are pubs now being allowed to be open when Boman Lusambo insisted that people should stay home and not be in pubs? Who is the decision maker? On what basis are they making these decisions when it comes to COVID-19 in Zambia? You have seen how a young man named Ian Motambo has lost his life because of negligence. And according to the Minister of Health, Dr. Chilufia, he stated that they have previously transported tests via public transport like whatever tests they've done it before so i i will never stop asking this question where is the 1.5 million dollars if people are worried so much if our government is worried so much about the welfare of the zambian people the 1.5 million dollars that was donated can be help helping people who need help are not thinking of opening pubs it takes one person to infect more than 10,000 people we never thought the coronavirus would affect people in the UK. I'll give you a situation of people in my small town or in the UK. UK is on complete lockdown. The only places that are open are shops and where they sell food, the post office, banks for a short while, and uh, hospitals, obviously. That's it. So what happens is when you go to the shop, there's a queue of you know two meter spacing not many people are allowed to be in a shop because of the same now if you're talking of a pub you can't have five people in a whole pub electricity will be wasted by the owner and uh, plus already you know there's zesco shortage in zambia there's always a power power cuts so electricity will be expensive there's water that will just be running and draining just for you mean people will open shops or pubs just for five customers how much are they going to make so if a customer comes because they want to watch football and they buy one drink the whole time yeah how much is the pub owner going to make it's not worth it I, if i own the pub i would rather people go and buy drinks from Shoprite, pick and pay and drink from home than asking people to come to my pub and sit the whole day watching super sport and have one drink because you cannot even chase those customers away and say can you leave you have to wait for them to finish in order for you to bring in more customers i think it will never ever work and it is a very daft decision i don't care what you say but it is a daft decision 
that we can allow people to be going to pubs and casinos because those are even high risk areas you have public toilets there are you going to be sharing some people are not that clean or hygienic are the owners of the pubs going to meet up to standards when it comes to cleaning the toilets or where people you know hold the hands the door handles the corona is a very very silly virus because you can catch it even just from touching surfaces that's the thing so why would me the owner of a restaurant or pub put people at risk for restaurants yes it is okay for them to open but on a takeaway basis people don't need to go and sit down there and eat because it's putting them at a risk as well you know imagine five people have come to eat in hungry like i mean i, I remember when i used to go and buy food in hungry Land just last year the crowds are like this packed uh, how are you going to contain that if Hungry Lion is open? Uh, who is a shareholder in Hungry Lion? Why are people so worried about making money instead of the welfare of the people and the health of the people? At this present time, the government needs to do a better thing by bringing in resources that can empower people by providing them with food supplements and also making sure that they are safe than thinking of opening pubs and restaurants and casinos. Knows. I think it's not necessary. Besides, not everybody can afford takeaway food anyway. I would rather people even cook from home. Yes, once in a while people might want to eat takeaway, but it's better those same businesses even deliver or people just go in, collect the food and go than waiting for the food and sit down in the restaurants and eat from there. I know people will argue based on the fact that or the first world, the way they're handling the coronavirus in terms of its people is different from the third world countries, which is like Africa and all the other parts of the world. But here's the thing. The first world countries are using taxpayers' money. The first world countries are using taxpayers' money to sustain the economy of their countries. Now, you, you, you find that our countries, especially African countries, they've received huge taxes in the past, but because they've never saved part of the money, the money goes in their pockets. That is why people are now suffering and struggling. I mean, thank God companies like Trade Kings donated $1.5 million, of which we don't know where it is, but that $1.5 million can at least help people with a few bags. You heard the current government claiming that they spent about how much 40,000 kwacha on 100 bags of millimil, which the economic sense doesn't even make sense. In this situation, they're already finding means of stealing from the people of Zambia. It is not right for governments to always be selfish and thinking of only themselves, only what suits them. I'm sure some of them own pubs, so they are wondering, ah, we are struggling now. This time of the pandemic, our businesses are failing, but are you opening the businesses because you want to make a profit or you are worried about the people of Zambia? Because I don't see a pub as being a necessity anyway. We don't need pubs to be open and therefore I am urging you, my subscribers, do not go to any pub the coronavirus is very deadly it's not even a joke every every day i will show you a video a snippet of a video of how every day lives are lost by the frontline people now imagine if somebody who is working in the front line has a proper PPE has equipped themselves they still find themselves dying to the coronavirus what about you who meet somebody whom you don't even know whether they have the coronavirus or not I have spoken to a gentleman from Zambia Amid that had the coronavirus he got it from a friend who came to visit because they shared a meal now in a restaurant you're talking about sharing cups pots cutlery whatever that is served there are the restaurants going to sanitize these things properly or are they going to be in a hurry because they want to save the next customer and another customer? Who's going to be inspecting these restaurants anyway? Are you going to make sure that these restaurants meet the health and safety guidelines or are you just going to allow them to operate Muchintu Wingi? Anyhow, however they want it, it's their business as usual. Or are you going to inspect them? Definitely not because you cannot even afford the resources to go and inspect each and every restaurant. This lady from Zambia lost a life a few days ago and the NHS had to pay a tribute to her. I'll just show you a brief video of what happened.
member Julie Edwards. My name is Jumaini Kalage. I'm the hospital chaplain. So we are here to comfort one another in our grief as our colleague and friend and sister, Julie Edwards, has been taken from this life and to give thanks for her life. I will start with a quote from Mehmet Murat Uja. In life, we live well like us to our children. Now, every day, lives of the frontline workers in the UK are lost. And whilst these people are there to care for COVID-19 people, patients, they lose their lives in the end. We've lost doctors. We've lost loads of nurses. We recently lost a nurse from Ghana who was heavily pregnant. I shared this in my other video. I will link it down below so that you can watch the full video. I have two parts, part one and part two, where I was just expressing what happened to this young lady. She lost her life. The coronavirus is not something that we can even joke about and say we want to open restaurants. In the first place, Zambia should have locked down, especially the borders, because we've seen so far the first person who died that came into Zambia came from South Africa, crossed the border, and now there's cases at Chirundu border. Now we also have cases in Nakonde as well. Nakonde is because it's between Tanzania and Zambia, and people go there for business, so that place is very popular. We have cases in Chilawambwe, we have cases in Lusaka, Saka and people are really being infected this is where what Bill Gates says comes in you know sometimes when we are advised as Africans and then we want to do anything of our own it brings problems Bill Gates has predicted with his uh, wife that they see many dead bodies lying around in Africa why because they know that some African countries receive aid in as much as they receive aid, they don't focus on the importance of health in our countries. This is the time when the coronavirus as well is exposing our African leaders. Because believe you me, Zambia's health system is pathetic. It's nowhere near most of these countries. Why? Because we have focused so much on things that only suit us, the leaders, only things that suit them. We have hospitals like Levi Manawasa Hospital, which is a good hospital, but how many more people can we contain in that hospital? You've seen how UTH looks like. You've seen how UTH looks like. The University Teaching Hospital of Zambia, the main hospital where we find professionals, it's not even a suitable place. It's, it's pathetic, it's dirty. I mean, how are you going to contain all these people that will be coming in to say they have the virus. Of course, it's not possible. So the best way is to avoid staying home and locking down Zambia for some time. All these things will end soon. Namibia had locked down for the past one month or so, and the lockdown has really worked. Everyone was indoors. South Africa has locked down as well, but now they are opening. Botswana, Botswana, I am so inspired about Botswana. I mean, when I was about what the president of Botswana has done, I was just impressed that we even have certain African leaders like the president of Botswana. He basically said every every MP should be under quarantine, should not travel anywhere, they should stay home, including himself. And then the MPs have offered their salaries towards helping the people of Botswana. Did you just hear that? The MPs use their salaries to help the people of Botswana. Which MP from Zambia will give you your salary? None. But when they want you to vote, they come to you and they give you a chitenge and a piece of bread or mealy meal, which is nothing to them. And after they are in power, they forget you. So this is the time for you as well to look at which leadership you need for 2021. So in 2021, we are looking at leadership that will help. Now, Somebody was just saying something to me about how they feel the government presently can even delay the elections next year because of COVID-19. So the best way for COVID-19 to be finished completely, of course, we'll still have one or two cases, is by self-isolation, staying home and 
closing the borders otherwise i'm telling you next year you will hear that the elections have been postponed because there was this delay and this delay and that delay that's what i wanted to say i am not happy about the decision of the president of zambia it's not a good decision that the casinos should be open we don't need to socialize zambian people don't need to socialize during the pandemic they need to be home looking after their health and i've seen a post somewhere where somebody was saying or oh, the person who has died this person has kidney problems this one had tb this one had this and there is that uh, comforting of themselves where people are saying oh it seems the pandemic is only for people who are not healthy well we've had a nigerian guy who was very strong in the community had no underlying issues he died of the coronavirus two weeks ago in the uk so don't even comfort yourselves because this is a deadly virus you don't need to socialize and the president should not even make such statements of saying it is okay for casinos to open we don't need to go to the casino you don't need to go to this casino stay home you don't need to go to a restaurant you can buy takeaway and they deliver in your house stay home stay safe you don't need to go to church i thank god church pastors even declined to go to church they said ah, we don't want in as much as the president has given us the authority to go to church we don't want to go to church so if church pastors have refused the owner of capons has refused he said he, he doesn't even want to open his place you you will be looking for a place to go go and when you die you know it's not us that will bury you the government of zambia will fly you with a chopper because the government of zambia has money to fly people who are dead but when they are alive they don't have money to fly them so if you are ready to be part of the people that will be flown by a chopper from one place to the other or by zaf from one place to the other no problem because that's what we know now our government has the money to fly people when they are dead but has no money to fly samples from one point to the other it's a girl in more terms also known as Gelowapa Z. See you in my next video. I will now leave you with a snippet of a video of the president as he declared that Zambia can have restaurants and other places open during this pandemic of COVID-19. Stay safe. Stay home. You don't need to go to those places. I know what I'm talking about. I face these things every time here in the UK. I'm home all the time when I'm off work because I know that it is not safe out there. The only place I go is go to the shops to get some food and I stay home the whole time. Stay home. Your life is more important. Your family needs you, not what the government is saying.
COVID-19 pandemic and its evolution has compelled governments world over to implement drastic measures to fight the disease, and Zambia is no exception. Countries and women, I'm aware of the global pattern and the devastating impact of the disease on the economy and the social lives. Globally, close to 4 million positive cases of COVID-19 have now been recorded. Out of these, more than 1 million have recovered, while almost 270,000 have died. Countries and women, in the last 24 hours, Zambia has recorded 14 positive cases out of 683 tested. These comprise six truck drivers tested at two healthcare workers in South Africa, one contact three positive cases. One from routine screening at the Zola Central Hospital. And three patients from health facility screening and one Tanzanian government screening in Chitamo. Countrymen and women, the trained analysis in general terms over a period of close to two months since London recorded its first case of COVID 19. I'll review the following. One, 167 have tested positive to COVID-19 out of 11,352 tested, representing 1.5% of all those tested. Of the 167 positive cases recorded and quarantine, 109 have since fully recovered, discharged, and have happily joined their families. This is a remarkable achievement. On a side note, though, Zambia has experienced four deaths related to COVID-19. However, medical reports of the three of these recorded deaths show they had serious underlying health conditions. Countrymen and women. From this trend analysis, we note that the number of infections recorded after testing in communities has remained generally low. We further note that the health status of those patients who are positive and under treatment for COVID-19 is generally stable. It is equally observed that the number of recoveries has consistently remained high in the market. In this trend analysis, can be generally said that this pandemic, in the case of Zambia, is relatively different from what other nations are experiencing, where the infection and the rates have been much higher. In saying this, I'm aware that we have been warned that the pandemic is yet to come for them. However, these nations that have been hardest hit by the pandemic and are still struggling. Provided we are here to the prescription.
prescribed health guidelines, regulations, and certification for COVID 19. Countrymen and women. In embracing the new normal living with COVID 19, let us continue to vigorously fight this disease and not become combative. The complexity of COVID 19 really calls for our scientists, Zander scientists, to get to work and answer the many questions surrounding coronavirus. Their findings will help government to make informed decisions. Let us not entirely depend on other countries' findings. Let us not entirely on other countries' findings. Countrymen and women, globally, we are all aware that the pandemic has negatively affected all sectors of the world economy, which includes aviation, tourism, social security, as well as the labor market. Zambia is indeed no exception. And we believe that the negative social economic impact being experienced world over is what is being felt in Zambia today. At country level, I am fully aware that the pandemic, as well as the measures we have taken as a government in our quest to save lives, have had a negative impact on the social and economic environment. As a result, we have experienced reduced revenue, thereby impacting negatively on the financing of national programs. If the status quo remains, rest assured that the economy will plunge into the waste crisis our country has ever experienced. However, we must be mindful of the need to steadily progress into living in the new normal for the sake of our health and the health of our children. This calls for us to review the measures we review to cautiously and significantly begin to ease so that the various sectors of our economy can start operating within the context of the new norm. Countrymen and women, I have therefore said it very careful. For restaurants, revert to their normal operation on the condition of adhering to the prescribed public health guidelines, regulation, and certification. I wish to direct the opening of cinemas major and casino again in line with the new norm while adhering to the prescribed public health guidelines, regulations and certification. As you are all aware, many businesses such as hotels, lodges, tour operators, internet cafes, as well as
and ensuring generally high levels of hygiene. These measures I'm taking today, in addition to those others we have taken in the past, will be for a period of seven to fourteen days, and they'll be reviewed anytime as the pandemic evolves. I think it's appropriate at this point to point out that some of the businesses we have been affected in this pronouncement of many today, such as taverns and bars, will be affected and reviewed by the next pronouncement to be made after we see how the measures we've taken up today are being implemented and how the pandemic. Countrymen and women, in my previous address, I announced the creation of the COVID-19 Economic Recovery Fund and directed the Ministry of Finance and other relevant ministries to consolidate resources to be displaced to small and medium businesses, women groups, the youth, and the most vulnerable that have been behind this hit. So far, I am aware that the modalities of displacement of the 10 billion quarter that the Bank of Zambia have not been quite adequately communicated to the whole beneficiaries, such as schools, gymnasiums, nightclub owners, cinemas, restaurants, and bars. I am therefore directing the Ministry of Finance to ensure that the modalities are agently communicated and the collateral demanded from the intended beneficiaries are realistic. Countrymen and women, I am aware that if schools, colleges, and universities remain closed, we shall have an education crisis and school calendars will be terribly affected. Already, our children are way behind since the schools were closed, and that is an education crisis in the making. I'm worried about our children who are tired and bored of staying at home for me, especially those in rural parts of the country. And we are seeing instances of juvenile delinquency increasing. I'm further concerned that when the schools remain closed, there's a likelihood of an increase in the moral decay of children and the youth as a result of them having more free time on their disposal. An idle mind is the devil's workshop, so goes the old saying. As much as all classes of our learners are important for the education of our children, we must cautiously and strategically manage the reopening of the schools in light of the COVID-19. It is for this reason that in the context of the new law, I am directing that the first classes be reopened in both primary and secondary school examination classes, and this will be on the 1st June 2020. Again, in condition that schools public health guidance, regulations, and certification, as I've said earlier. I further direct the Ministry of Health and the Disaster Management and Education Unit to ensure that face masks. and sanitizers and the hand sanitizer say hand sanitizer hand sanitizers Chaba kumuti mane kanande Bantu e chichintu mwe bantu Awe shuwe chichena tichala shupa Muntu pa menso ya bantu nga sumina Atila idu Iwe You promised me
for watching my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. And follow me on all social media platforms at Lilimo Terms.